That car by the bar ain't got no fire. Or a sermon on alterators, voltmeters, and debugging. Written by Pastor Manuel Laproig, who is not certified by the ASE. First published in the journal Proof of Concept or Get a Fuck Out, Volume 0x15. Dear neighbours, I have a story to tell, and it's not a very flattering one. A few years back, when I was having a bad day, I bought a $500 Mercedes and took it to the open road. It had some issues, of course. So, a hundred miles down the road, I stopped in rural Virginia and bought a new stereo. This was how I learned that installing a stereo in a Walmart parking lot looks a lot like stealing a stereo from a Walmart parking lot. I also learned rather quickly that my four courses of auto shop in high school mounted to a lot of book knowledge and not much practical knowledge. My buddies who bought cars and fixed them first-hand learned and still know, a hell of a lot more about their machines than I will ever about mine. When squirrels shoot through their wiring harness, when metal flakes made the windshield wiper activate on its own, when the fuel line was cut by rubbish in the street, as was tearing down the interstate at autobahn speeds, I often took the lazy way out and paid for a professional to repair it. But what is true you learn a lot more by building your own bird feeder. That is not a purpose of this sermon. Today I'd like to tell you about some alterator trouble. Somehow, some way, by some mechanism unknown to gods and men. This car seemed to kill every perfectly good alterator placed inside of it and no mechanic could figure out why. It went like this. I'd be off having adventures, then drop into town to pick up my wheels. Having been away for so long, the battery would be dead. No big deal, I'd say, and jump-start the engine. After the engine caught, I'd remove the cables, and soon enough, the battery would be dead again. The engine with it. So I'd switch to driving my Ford and sent my car to the shop. The mechanics at the shop would test the alterator and it looked good. They'd test the battery and it looked good. Then they'd start a car and the alterator voltage would be low so they'd replace it out of caution. No one knew the root cause, but the parts under warranty and the labour is cheap, so who cares? What actually happened is this. The alterator didn't engage until the engine revved beyond natural idling or starting. The designers must have done this to reduce the load on the start motor, but it has the annoying side effect of letting the battery run to nothing after a jump start. The only indication to the driver is that the lights are a little dim until the gas is fully pressed. I learnt this by accident after installing a voltmeter. Setting aside for the moment how absurd it is that cars ship without one, let's consider how the mechanics were fooled. In software terms, we'd say they were confronted with a poorly reproducible test case. They were bug hunting from anecdotes, from hand-picked artisanal data. This always ends in disaster. Whether it's a frustrated software maintainer or a mechanic who becomes an unknowing accomplice to four counts of warranty fraud.
So, what mistakes did I make? First, I outsourced my understanding to a shop, rather than fixing my own bird feeder. The mechanic at the shop would see the car once every six months, and he'd forget the little things. He'd never notice the lights were slightly dim before revving the engine, because he never started the car at night. To really understand something, you ought to have a deep familiarity with it. A passing view is bound to give you a quick little fix. Or an exploit doesn't always achieve continuation on its target. Further, he never noticed the battery only died after a jump start, but never in normal use. Because of all the cars he sees have already exhibited one problem or another, and most of them were daily drivers. Whenever you are hunting a rare bug, consider the pre-existing conditions that brought that crash to your attention. Getting back to the bastard who designed a car with a single idiot light and no voltmeter. The single handiest tool to avoid these unnecessary repairs would have been to reproduce the problem when the car wasn't failing, rather than spending months between the car failing to start. A voltmeter would have shown me that the voltage was low only before the engine was revved up. In the same way, we should use every debugging tool at our disposal to make a problem reproducible in the shortest time possible, even if that Visibility doesn't end in the problem that was first reported. Paying attention to the voltage during a few drives would have revealed the real problem, even when the battery is sufficiently charged, that the engine doesn't die. For this reason, we should be looking for the root cause of everything, never settling for the visible effects. We who play with computers have debugging tools that the best mechanic could only dream of. We have checkpoint debuggers, which can take a snapshot just before a failure, then repeatedly execute a crash until the cause is known. We have S-trace, D-trace, F-trace, and we have disassemblers and decompilers. We have TCP dump and TCP replay. We are more hooks than Maudib's Fedaiken. We can deluge a machine with a thousand core dumps, then merge them into a single test case that reproduces a crash with crystal clarity. Or, if we prefer, a proof of concept that escapes from the deepest sandbox to the outer limits. Yet, the humble all traitor still has an important lesson to teach us. Greetings everyone, and welcome to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this little sermon. I thought it was funny, at least. And, um, yeah, I hope you don't mind the very irritating voice I used, but... I wanted to try it out for once. And, uh, yeah. There's a little bit of, um, uh, Dune in this too. <laughs> like the last one. So, yeah. I think he might have read the Dune books when he wrote these. Don't you think? Anyway. Thank you for listening and watching. And I'll see you next time. Toots, everyone. Bye.